All right. Uh, if you're watching the video and not in class, welcome back. This is on MF. Yeah, I know. Fixing it. Just takes a second for the power to cycle. All right, this is on 4.7 and it's called Newton's Method. Uh, this is used to calculate approximately where f of x equals zero when traditional methods suck. Um, so, like, for example, uh, if we had f of x equals x to the fourth minus one, this isn't too bad. Where this equals zero, I would do x to the fourth, I could add one to both sides. And then I could take the fourth root, and I would get x equals plus or minus one. We found the zeros relatively easy. What if f of x is x to the fourth minus five, though? By this same process, we're going to get x equals plus or minus the fourth root of five. And I don't know what that is. And I don't have a fourth root of five button on my calculator. Now, I could take the square root twice, but that's this. this we don't think of it in terms of this specific function only. This method works on any of it. Uh, so let's see what that looks like. Let me come over and take a look. Okay. So like doing this, If you do x to the fourth minus five, it's crossing somewhere between negative one and negative two, and positive one and positive two. So that's for x to the fourth minus one. Yeah, well, this is for x to the fourth minus five. Okay. So that would be negative five right down there. We're looking for the X values right here though. And that's not a very good one to give it at. So I'm going to like draw a picture of something else, different function, just to do, kind of show you how Newton's method works. Let's say we had something like this. The curvature makes it a little bit easier to see. What we do is we pick some starting value x1, starting value.
which is gives us a starting y value of y1. There is a tangent line right there that does that. So the tangent at y1. So what you do is you start with your x1, you go up to this, and you follow the tangent line down, and you use where that hits to be your x2, and you repeat this process. x2 goes up to x2, y2. You find the tangent line there, and you get like an x3 following the tangent line there. That's the idea of what's happening. There's a, an equation that we're going to use to do it, though. So we want to let's we want to start with the tangent line. at x1, y1, or x1, f of x1. Well, we've done this before. The slope is m equals f prime of x, and since we're calculating it x1, it's f prime of x1. And then we would plug this into y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This is y minus, I'm going to use f of x1 here, equals f prime of x1 times x minus x1. And this x right here is for any x on that line. We want x2. And if we want x2, x2 goes with y2. This turns into y2, or f of x2, I should say, f of x2 minus f of x1 equals f prime of x1 times x2 minus x1. But actually, we don't want y2, we want 0. We want where it hits the axis. So my y2 here is going to be 0. Change that to 0. We're looking for the x-intercept, or where the y value equals 0. And now if we want x2, solve for x2. I'll divide both sides by f prime of x1. And I'm going to rewrite this with uh, the x's on the left. And we will add x1 to both sides. And we get x2 equals x1 minus f of x1 over x, f prime of x1. We 
we could repeat this process going up to x2, y2 and finding x3. That just shifts all these values by one. If I repeated that process, I would get that. And if we wrote a general form of this, the general form of the Newton's method, if we start with Xn, we're looking for Xn plus one, the next step xn plus 1 equals xn minus f of xn over f prime of xn. I was, I was in the engineering Reddit, and someone was complaining about, like, calculus teacher having unrealistic, like, a top two teacher wanting them to do work, not memorize specific formulas, because they memorize an obscure formula and use it on the test. And uh, yeah, Mark down a little bit for it. And he was like, playing, and I'm like, as a calculus teacher, I can tell you why. That formula is only going to help you on a problem that's identical to that. But if you know how to do it without the formula, you, you've learned a tool. You know how to do it. You would consider someone trying to build something that doesn't know how to use a hammer a fucking shitty builder. This same thing here. And some students like, Later on, hops on and goes, I had a numerical analysis teacher that we used to be a chemical engineer, and he needed a formula for the Newton's method, and we couldn't remember it. And so he looked it up. And so you're saying he's an idiot for looking at the Newton's method? And I'm like, if he's teaching you math at a university, he means he should have a math degree. And if he didn't know this fucking method, yeah, he's a fucking idiot. I didn't say it like that, but I'm like, he forgot something that he should know. Uh, he should know how to do this. And that that's all the kid fixated on. I'm like, that's not the point here. The point is, is he didn't memorize the method. If he thought about how, to, how the method works, he'd be fine. And math teacher should be able to do it. Rederiving this formula for you is probably something you won't remember how to do, but you could. We just showed how to do it, starting with the, slow, the point slope form. Uh, so when we're using this, you just pick a starting value. And keep going, keep calculating new iterations. Until xn plus 1 is approximately xn which means you're not moving anymore. Or if you need within a specific accuracy, Let's say the four decimal places. You go until xn plus one minus xn equals 0 0.0000 0 and then some numbers. That would mean the numbers aren't changing. The first four decimal places aren't changing and you have your target. Does that make sense?
So back to our x to the fourth minus five. We saw that over here between one and two, it's crossing somewhere there. Do you guys want to start at one or start at two? I strongly recommend always starting an integer because that makes at least the first step easy to do. Someone pick a value. Two. All right. So we're going to say x1 equals two. So if we want x2, we want x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1, which in this case is 2 minus, if I stick in 2 into this, I've got 2 to the 4th minus 5 over, well, maybe I should write down what f prime of x is. f prime of x is just 4x cubed. over four times two cubed. Let's figure out what that is. Two to the fourth is what, 16? Minus five is 11, divided by effectively two to the fifth, which is three, eight times four is 32. 11 divided by 32, and then I'm gonna subtract that from two. I'm getting, 2 minus 0 0.34375, x2 equals 1.65625. And now this is where it starts getting ugly. Let's say we want x3. X3 equals 1.65625 minus 1.65625 to the fourth power minus 5 over 4 times, if this is answered, If you're doing it and you're calculating, you might be able to speed it up. Once you have a step, if you can recognize what this is in your calculator, I can do answer minus parentheses. I'm going to do another parentheses. Answer raised to the fourth power. minus five parentheses. That's my numerator divided by parentheses four times answer cubed and parentheses and parentheses. And I'm getting that. So X of three, One point five one seven three one three nine four seven. If you've done it where you put it in the calculator using answer to do this, it makes it really handy to find the next step because all you gotta do is hit the equal button again and it'll calculate the same thing over with your new answer. Check this shit out. I set it up to look like this doing answer. Answer minus Answer to the fourth minus five over four times answer cubed. That's what I put in my calculator. And if I want x to the fourth, or not x to the fourth, x four, I just hit the equal button again. And if you plug it in your calculator, you don't need to keep plugging in all this crazy shit in your calculator. It will figure it out each time. I'm getting 1.4958, oops, my decimal's in the wrong spot, 95821158. If I want x5, I'll hit equals again. Oops. 
1.49583490005. And if I wanted within four decimal places, look at that. These four decimal places are matching. So to four decimal places, one point four nine five eight. Assuming I see, did everything correctly there, that's what it should be. Uh, we can check it though, because our calculator will calculate to four through to five. And one way to do that is do the square root of five and take the square root of that. 1.495, but it's giving me a three. I wonder if I type something in wrong somewhere. I think you added an eight in X to the third. Yeah, it's fine. It's just 1.495, three. Uh, there was a three there? Uh, in X five. X five. Oh, right there. But you just wasn't an eight. So maybe X six would have given me the one point four nine five three. I must have wrote it down wrong. Now, if you guys want to see this in like Desmos, check this shit out, and you'll have access to this. Uh, So if you come over to our modules, and I just loaded it up today, I didn't realize I didn't have it showing. Uh, you go into chapter four documents. Scroll down until you get to the Newton's method and click on Desmos calculator. And if you do, it'll take you to the calculator. I've got X to the fourth minus five in there. We've got X not equals two as a starting point in there. And this is what it was calculating. Our X2 was 1.6565. Our X3 was 1.517. These are the numbers we had. And if you keep zooming in, you keep getting closer and closer. 1.4958. And it doesn't go any closer. It's not scheduled to go closer. So we can change this by saying, Let's go to our first step here. It was 1.65625. And that changes ours. So it's starting there. And we're tracking it down. And we got down to here, 1.4958. And it's going up. It looks like it's following it down. But depending on your starting value, easier to see if you're scrolled out. Uh, the closer you start, the fewer steps it takes to get there. If I started at 1.5, I'm starting super close and it gets there really quickly. Like the first step gets us to that. So picking a good starting value, one that's close to it is helpful. And if you wanna toy around with this to try it with other things to see how it's working, uh, like if we have another problem, I'll let's see. I had it written down over here that I what I wanted to do. Let's try kind of come down here and write what it is. It's e to the x equals three minus two x. So if I want to make that a function, I could say e to the x minus three plus two X, add it all over to one side. And I can copy this and paste this up here in my GX. Replace that. 
I'm going to come down here and turn those off. I don't want them graphing. I was just using that to calculate some stuff. And now this is a different function. It's not, it doesn't, this is the one we've got here. But now you can try different starting values. This is said if you've got a play button, it does a range. Uh, but if you want to edit it, uh, just click on it and change zero to five to whatever, whatever value you want to look for. And so you can play around this while you're doing it uh, to see if you get your answer correct pretty quickly on anything. But I recommend trying to do this approach where you use the calculator. Where we plug in, let me write that equation we just had. We were looking at f of x equals e to the x minus 3 plus 2x. And we want to know where this equals 0. And let me see, if it's starting point, start at 1. Let x1 equal 1. So, what is f prime of x here? e to the x plus 2, right? So, x1 or x2 is going to equal x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. Which is 1 minus e to the 1 minus 3 plus 2 times 1 all over e to the 1 plus 2. If you want to make this easy in your calculator right away, start by just doing one in the calculator and hitting equals. I'm going to do that here. Now it's stored one as my answer. One is stored as answer. Now set this up so that everywhere x1 was, here, 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 and here. God damn it. Made in China. I know. Thank you. If you hear me say God damn it, it's because I accidentally, very rarely, but it's always when I fucking hit that. Damn button. If I say god damn it, the power is going up real quick. All right, so I am going to, in my calculator, do answer minus parentheses E raised to answer. If your calculator has an answer button, minus three plus two times answer. And then I'm going to do divided by e to the answer plus two. And assuming I have one already in there, it's got answer in there. I just got to program this in patiently. Answer minus parentheses. E to the answer minus three. It shouldn't, be, it shouldn't be raised to the power. I mean, raised to the power. I think my calculator does that automatically. I'm going to find out real quick. Actually, it's easy to just find out right now. Uh, shift E one. Yeah, I don't need to do the rise of power. 
Okay, so one equals, and now I'm going to do answer minus parentheses E answer. If your calculator requires you to put the caret in, do so. Plus two times answer and parentheses divided by a new parentheses E to the answer plus two and parentheses. Assuming you've got it plugged in well, I can just now keep hitting equal until I get what I want. But like on the test, you're going to need to do this. And so go slowly. If you write this down and show me this is what you did in your calculator, that will be fine. You just at that point have to start showing the next steps. So x1 equals 1, x2 equals 0 0.6358. Two four six seven two, and I hit equal again, and I get x three equals zero point five nine four six one nine eight two four, and I hit equal again, and I'm just recording them, and you'll notice you, you start to close in, and your number is not changing a lot at some point. And that's the same thing I just had for X5. So to a bunch of decimal places, that's the correct answer. But knowing how to program, do this in your calculator from the get-go, it's gonna save you a lot of work each step. What are you doing out here? That's Mrs. Redding. Uh, she teaches the, oh, she's coming in. If you're going down the engineering rabbit hole or math or physics, you will have Miss Redden as your instructor at some point. She likes to do the upper division, like top courses. Ooh, I'm going to walk in. What the hell? You like brings darkness with her. She's the devil. What happened to the light? You guys have to get up and dance. No, this is not happening. <laughs> It's like not with students in here. That was crazy. Uh, she teaches differential equations and linear algebra and stuff like that after calculating. We're just going over Newton's method. Yeah, it's about, we're just going over Newton's method and how to do it quickly in the calculator. So after x sticks, that's going to be the same, uh, the same always? Yeah, when I did x5, I got that. When I did it again, I got x6. And you'll notice if I hit equals again, you just hit equals. my value isn't changing. Yeah, we went over programming in the calculator so that you're not doing it the hard way and trying to plug it in each time. So x64 infinity? This is the final answer. It works on your phone now. You guys done graphing it? Yeah, uh, yeah, we did it. We did it on Desmos. I showed them the graph of Desmos, but we didn't zoom in on the answers. Uh, but we can real quick. So we got our e to the x minus 3 plus 2x. Uh, I'm going to give this a lower starting value. What was our final answer? Let's start at like 0.75. Well, we started at 1. Let's look at 1 and see what it shows us. You're right. I got 0.1. That's not right. So 1, we, that was our first point, point six. That's what we had written down. Uh, and you get closer and closer and closer. And eventually, this has only got so many steps plugged in. So if you want to get, like, show it zooming in closer, you got to change this X naught to one of your later values. Any questions on that? What are you doing out here? Oh, you know, I'm uh, visiting new faculty, giving them their little prize. Nice. She's normally on by Celia. She doesn't she doesn't slum it out here with us Larry dogs. I'm supposed to come visit the campus in the morning now. I'm actually reassigned time from CTA. Ah, nice. 
All right, so Jacob, let me go back to Zoom. Have a good one. Uh, Jacob showed me a question. It's on the homework. How do you know you, you like, take a guess? Like, try some test numbers. So Jose asked, how do we pick? Uh, let me come on back over. Like, how do you know what to start with? I would have probably started with, I would have said, well, what's f of zero? If f x equals zero, f of zero is e to the zero minus three plus zero, one minus e to the zero, there we go. e to the zero is one, one minus three is negative two. Then maybe I would have tried x equals one, e to the one minus three plus two, which is e to the one minus one, which is about 1.8 something. And just would have tried different values there. Until you get ones that are close to zero. And then I'm gonna go, okay, well, this is a negative and this is a positive. It means somewhere between zero and one it's crossing, right? That was our intermediate value theorem. If we have a negative on one side and a positive on the next, there has to be a root somewhere in the middle. Uh, so I would have gone there. I might have even gone down and said x equals 0 0.5 and started there, because that's probably closer than 0 or 1. That's how I would have picked the starting one. Uh, you were calling me out. What? You are calling me out, saying I had uh, the problem I gave you? Yeah, it was... Well, I hope they asked the question we made on topic. All right. It's not calling you out. It was a good question. Uh, so Jacob asked about a question in 4.5. I think it's number seven. Yeah. It's on a triangle, and they give you a triangle, and this was 10. This is six. Yeah. This is six, and this is eight. And they show, like, a rectangle in here, and they go, how do we maximize the area of this rectangle? which is tricky. What I'm gonna start doing is start labeling some sides. Maybe I'll call this L and this W for length and width. That way I know what I'm looking for here. And if this big triangle is 1086, this smaller triangle has a similar relationship. L, maybe I'll call this X and Y. That way X is horizontal and Y is vertical. So these are identical triangles. So I could say Y compares to L like eight compares to 10. These are proportional triangles, so I'm doing the corresponding side on top over the corresponding side on bottom. I ultimately want L. Uh, maybe I can label this some other stuff. I'll add a Z here. We'll call that Z. And I need W. And it looks like I've got L with the relationship to Y. I could write this as Y equals or this L or 0.8 L. If I look at this, this line right here, Y plus Z equals eight. So Y has to equal eight minus Z or Z has to equal eight minus Y, whatever one we want to use. I need an equation that's got W in it, though. I'm going to need something with W. Ultimately, we're looking at area equals length times width. This is our goal. But that's too many variables. So I want some way to relate W to L, which means maybe if I can relate W to Z. So goal. 
relate W to L. L is related to Y. So relate W to Y. And that'll give me a relationship to L. So I can make a, I can look at this triangle up here. This is a right triangle. This is W. This is my Z. This is making some angle theta. And if I do this, it looks like opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So W equals Z sine theta. We don't have a lot of time yet left, but we're almost there to like steps you can work on. We can, that is the same theta though from 10, 8, 6. So we could do like tangent theta equals six over eight, and we can find theta theta or tangent inverse of point seven five in degrees thirty six point eight six nine eight nine seven six five degrees. And if I wanted sine of theta, shit, 0 0.6. Well, I made that shit easy. So W equals 0 0.6 Z. But Z equals 8 minus Y. And y equals four fifths L, which means W equals zero point six. Get down here. W equals zero point six times eight minus four fifths L. If I want L, I need to solve that for L. L equals five fourths y. Yeah, I got what I want. I don't even need that. I got what I need here. I can come up here and plug this in, and I've got area equals L times 0 0.6 times 8 minus 4 this L. And now I have an equation in terms of area with only one variable L. Take derivative and go. And optimize. So that's how you go about doing it, and it's figuring out the relationship between the sides and just plugging in stuff and going, what can I use to get it? All right, it's uh, 10.02. Sorry to hold you a little bit longer, but that was a question that he had. I'm sure you all have been doing your homework and get to and go, what the fuck do I do here? Thank you. Huh? I will see you guys on Tuesday. Can you please come back to the other page? Because I didn't see a graph you. That's the long thing. Yeah. I had that thing up for like three minutes. Or like Dr. Tracy, we just be slapped. Thank you. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I'm going to be your pain in the ass for the next three, four years. I hope so. I know you are. It's, it's every single. Well, I'm not teaching Calc 2 next semester, so... No, I, I will wait until the next semester to, to teach Calc 2. Don't worry. You don't want to do that. But you can't <laughs> come to the Space Center.